Next, we'll go into the angle measurement uh, procedures, and maybe a few cautionary notes before we start with that would be helpful. Uh, the first one that I want to discuss here is the um, sequence of angles to be measured. Um, it's tempting to go just simply to one of the intermediate angles if that's all you're interested in. And I want to caution you that it's just the one section in the whole standard where we ask that you go through it in a sequence. That sequence is important because we've learned the hard way that if you don't do that, the CMD gets, takes a little different position than if you go through it in the sequence. And so as we go through this, this the CMD sh shouldn't be moving, but it does. Because it does, we want to get that consistent, get to the same position on the chair of the CMD every time. So that's one caution. And the other caution, or maybe observation I want to make here, is that as we started out this uh, set of measurements, you may recall that we put the tension adjustment that controls the force that you must use to get the tilt, uh, as you are operating the chair yourself, uh, to control that, that force. We've set that in the midpoint, and that's good, and it's, and it's proper for the initial uh, series of measurements we're going to make. But in the middle of this, when we get to actually measuring the total tilt of the chair, we're going to ask you to make that uh, uh, tension adjustment the minimum. And there's a reason for that. We found that if you use, simply use your hands to pull the uh, tilt uh, mechanism back to a stop, that the various operators who are making the measurements pull harder or lighter, and that causes us to get different answers between the operators. So we found we best, if we can, switch to letting the CMD itself force the chair to back to its tilt position. That doesn't always succeed, as we see in the, the notes within the uh, write-up. There are times you may have to pull, but you know, only have to pull lightly as opposed to heavily. So we're going to shift some weights around, and we're going to change the tension at that point. And I'll, I'll point that out as we get to it. Lastly, and probably the, the area where we've had the most difficulty, uh, is keeping straight what the angle directions are. Many of us have used the uh, direction of angles to be anything that tilts the chair back or the seat uh, is a positive number. And this standard does not do that. It follows a convention of clockwise is positive. Any clockwise rotation of an angle is positive. Any counterclockwise uh, change in, in direction is a negative number. We really need to focus on that, and I would suggest that you go back to this figure, I'm sorry, section 3.2, which has a figure in it that kind of lays this out visually. Spend some time looking at it, understanding if you're not used to that, that things have changed, try to get that in your head before you start, otherwise you're going to be confused as you go. Our first angle we're going to measure is the one that's in the chart called number one, and it asks that we set the seat of the chair as horizontal as possible, and we set the, up, uh, the backrest as vertical as possible. We've done that, and we find here in this particular chair that the uh, seat is just tilted backwards a little bit. So. We're going to see a small angle going this direction. So that's given it the fact that we're going counterclockwise. That means it's going to be about a minus two or three degrees. Similarly, the um, backrest is tilted slightly to the backwards direction here or in the counterclockwise direction. So we, we record the, the uh, seat angle. We then pick the device up and make the measurement of the seat or the backrest angle uh, and we're going to get a small uh, amount of measurement on this thing, uh, this device, and it's going to be uh, um, about a minus three degrees off of the vertical. But keep in mind our specification here requires that we measure the angle of the backrest off of the horizontal. So we're coming up this way in a counterclockwise direction a full 90 degrees plus about three degrees more so that the backrest 
angle would be recorded as a minus 93 degrees. Having recorded the data in the appropriate spots, we now are required to do a calculation. And this calculation is between the seat and the backrest, not off of the horizontal any, any longer. So we take the two values that we recorded earlier, and we get the difference between the two of them. And the difference between a minus 93 and a minus 3 ends up being just simply 90 degrees. And you record that. Our second set of angles to be measured is number 2. Number 2 directs us to tilt the seat as far forward as can be tilted. And it, to, and it makes a cautionary note to let the backrest do whatever it does when you've done that. Don't change the adjustment on the backrest. Um, and so here we've done that. You can see we have a substantial tilt forward of this particular chair. It appears to have tilted forward 5, 8 degrees, something like that. But you can also, when you move this up here, you'll see that that's tilted forward also. So what we do is we, we, we record this angle on the seat as having tilted forward or in a clockwise direction. So that that uh, about 8 degrees of forward tilt is recorded as a plus 8 degrees. Then we come up to the back and we notice that it's going forward just a couple degrees here. So we have a situation where we have the, the, the rotation or the, the specification has to come off of the horizontal. So it went in a negative direction or counterclockwise this way but then it came back forward a couple degrees. So we have that minus 90 degrees coming back forward. So now instead of minus 90, it is, the recording should be about minus 88 degrees. You make that recording. And now you have a calculation to do again of how far, uh, what the, the angles between the seat and the backrest. And we recorded it here a plus 8 degrees and we have a minus 88 degrees um, and the backrest angle and the difference between those two ends up being 96 degrees and you record that.